All right, football today is back with another special segment. Rather than the usual panel, the usual knuckleheads that we have usually in the studio, we've got extra knowledge and professionalism. I'm here with Aaron Smith, sports reporter for Code Sports. Loving the jersey, uh, Aaron, the uh, Matilda's kid. That's my favorite kid at the moment, I reckon. Uh, thank you for coming on. How are you going? Yeah, good. Thank you. How are you? Really good, really good. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk all things women's football today, actually. Uh, we always talk about the EPL and things like that. We love talking about the Matildas, so we'll touch on that. Uh, so the Matildas are playing in a really important clash this Saturday, which we'll get right into. But also a bit of news in the Women's A-League and an article that you wrote. I'll start off that with that with the first question of the day. I uh, saw a great article you wrote about the Women's A-League. Players on a lot less money. Uh, Carpen, like, likes of Carpenter, Ali Carpenter, that used to play in the Women's A-League. Okay, Polking orders come out, sort of shown behind some support behind this league and getting more money involved. What would you say that some extra pay and would do to grow and improve this league and the standards that it can get to? I think it would be astronomical. I mean, yeah. with the exception of the Matildas players and the international stars, every player is essentially juggling their football career with a second job. Yeah, some it's tough. Like, yeah. yeah, some of them at schools, some of them are working at Maccas, like... It's Crazy. not really screaming professionalism. Um, giving the extra money doesn't just give them time, though, to focus on football. It allows the clubs to be more professional. So Definitely, at the yeah. moment, clubs aren't able to hold training sessions at the most optimal time for peak performance. It's picking a training session that the majority of the players can get to in between their other jobs which is far from ideal. No, yeah, you don't want that in the, in the professional environment, do you? No, definitely no, not. So, yeah, I think it would change everything and not just close the equity gap that we see between the men and the women, which is ginormous. Yeah. It would, I mean, you can't grow the sport without investment and I think the next investment has to be full-time contracts for these players. They're on nine-month contracts um, trying to juggle jobs and everything in between training and football. It, it can't be easy. No, no, you're right. I think you've, you've made some really good points. It's not just you have to do with the standards. It's just the whole, even recruiting players, a player comes in and you're seeing the training schedules all over the shop or things like that. It would it would change a lot. So I think, yeah, you're spot on. And definitely check out that article that uh, Aaron's written. Uh, it's really good on uh, Code Sports, I believe. Uh, let's get into some Matildas. So that, yeah, a bit of, that was a bit about the women's A-League that we like to touch on. But now the Matildas, they're playing a huge match, Olympic qualifier against Uzbekistan in Uzbekistan, the first league this Saturday night. Obviously, no Sam Kerr, which a lot of fans would be sad about, but the depth in this team is crazy, as we showed in the women's world. Be the goal scorer uh, against Uzbekistan. I think there'll be a couple. If yeah, things I think it'll be way, a pretty but... high-scoring game from the Matildas, yeah. I'm hoping it's going to be Mary Fowler and Caitlin Ford. Yep. I just really want them to, to find that rhythm and start singing together. <laughs> um, Sam Kerr is going to be out for a while. So Definitely. this isn't mm. a short-term solution. We need to find a long-term solution to this problem. Yep. And I think those two really are the answer. I mean, Mary Fowler is just phenomenal. And Caitlin Ford, she has been a touch out of form, but when she's on song, she, you, you can't fault her. So I think if those two can find their rhythm, the Matildas will be almost unstoppable. Yeah, no, I think that's a great call, especially, yeah, Caleb Ford. Some, I feel like a lot of these players sort of find their best form for the Matildas. They might yeah, be a bit different form for Arsenal or, or Man City in the uh, Women's Super League, which I've been disappointed Mary Fowler's not starting. But I feel like when she comes back in, she'll be eager to be in that starting lineup again for the Matildas, which would yeah, be really good. Uh, yeah, the majority of their, the players now are ready to face uh, Uzbekistan over there in Uzbekistan. Uh, how do you fancy the chances? I think a lot of people are expecting a pretty big win. And do you think we'll see any new faces in the starting 11? I think it's going to be an interesting match. I mean, if you look at how Uzbekistan played against Japan in their qualifiers, they, yep. they parked the bus. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, they And they can do it well and they can do it for 90 minutes, which is frustrating. Not yeah. yeah. Matilda's favor. They like to be able to, you know, be free and play their football. So I think it's going to be an interesting challenge for them. Um, the Matildas have come up against it quite a few times now and have managed, you know, with the exception of Nigeria at the yep. World Cup, they've managed to handle it quite well. Um, I don't think TG is going to put any of those new faces in that starting 11. Okay. Yep. Think, um, he's going to go out hard and prove what the Matildas can do. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking they'll more be off the bench. Off the bench, yeah. going to be a... Everyone's going to see a team they're used to seeing yes. on that field. 
Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm hoping for anyway. I mean, TG is impossible to pick. He always yeah. seems to do whatever no one expects him to do. So yeah, that, just, uh, just have to wait and see. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. It was a bit like that against the Canada games where we got smashed and they were playing sort of the second team and things like that. Bit of an impromptu one off the bench. We got Michelle Heyman. Is she likes to come off the bench and score. Everyone's been talking about her. We talked about her last week on the show. Or any other ones you think might come off the bench and make a bit of an impact? If Michelle Heyman gets on the field and gets a chance, she yeah. will finish it. She will finish. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she <Yeah>. doesn't miss. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's what we want to see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if she's given a chance, she will score. Yep. Um, it's just whether or not TG uses it. I think yeah. it's going to come down to who's in that camp and how they're performing. Um, the weather could play an impact too. I mean, it's pretty chilly over there. <laughs> yes. I saw that actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, That'd be a bit different. Yeah, I think it's expected a top of three degrees on Wednesday. Oh, um, I'm looking at it now. It's currently minus six in the morning uh, yeah. over there. That's 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 not fun. <laughs> so the Aussie players, the ones who've come from the A leagues, they might, you know, still be acclimatizing. It'll be just interesting True. to see if they do get on the field. Yeah. Um, as for others, Torch, I think you'll give Caitlin Torpy a run, yep. even if it's for 20 minutes or something, just to see what she can do. I don't That'd think be really exciting. Yeah. To that camp, yeah, wanting to test her. Um, I think it'd be a big ask if he put Sophie Harding on, though. Um, yeah. She's never played in a, never even been in a national camp before. So crazy, yeah. I think um, she'll just be soaking it all in and might get her chance in Melbourne. But I'd be surprised if she got on the field, unless you know somehow we end up seven nil up or something. <laughs> yeah, which we, which we might. You never know. Uh, yeah. no, I think. I think you're making yeah, some good points. There. Even just some of those uh, girls just come into the squad, just the experience of being part of the superstars and and knowing the game plan and things like that, I think will be really valuable. Uh, those are my main questions for you. And I'm going to do a bit of a quick fire one to finish, just some players and then a score prediction. I want your most underrated player in this Miss Matilda squad at the moment. Claire Hunt. Claire Hunt, yeah. Great call, great call. Uh, biggest X Factor? Kara Cooney Cross. Yes, nice, nice. Uh, yeah, Arsenal fans will be loving that. Uh, score <laughs> prediction, I think it's going to be... Pretty one-sided, but it might be tougher over there. As you mentioned, the conditions might be a bit funny, but what's your score prediction? I'm going to go 2-0. 2-0, yeah, okay. I think we yeah. Might, yeah, I think if we get those early girl, goals, we might sit back and just play a bit conservative. I'm not, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, I'm especially not if they're parking the bus, yeah. we for a big win, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, it might be a bit bigger in Melbourne, I reckon. Especially, yeah. this would be a good practice, actually, for some Olympic games when we've got some teams that might end up parking the bus as well. So this would be great exactly. practice for that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, hopefully, it's a 2-0 win. We'll be back in half for the Matilda. Uh, I think that's it. Check out Aaron Smith on Code Sports and all over the socials like Twitter. Uh, Aaron will be in Melbourne next week, actually, for the Matilda second leg. So she'll be in the studio. So check that out on YouTube next week, which will be really good fun. Uh, thank you very much for coming on, Aaron. Go the Matildas. Yes, go the Matildas.